Hi, are you okay? Um, <laughs> there seems to be a little bit of delay then in starting that video, so you might get like a second or two where there's no noise. It just didn't kind of flash up properly to say that it started. Um, recording now, it's about 15 seconds. Right, so we've got a uh, modeling. So this is the, the pack. This pack is the last pack for the first year for like the pure content. Um, it's going to do it in about four lessons, I think. So we've got lesson one. Lesson two, lesson three, and probably them together, lesson four. So that's our plan. Right, so let's have a go at this one then. So mathematical modeling. Now, in reality, this happens all the time. Every single second of the day, somebody somewhere has got raw data, has made a graph out of it, has made an equation out of it, has tried to see if he can get a better equation, a better graph, and is using that to predict what's going to happen next. So it's ridiculously important, this, and it's really, really useful. Right, so let's have a look at that. Oh, come back. <laughs> Hang on. Okay. So lesson one. So it says here, it's the process of describing a real-life situation mathematically. Um, so it says, whenever you attempt a question presented in real life, you're using a model. Uh, we've done this with the exponentials when we predicted the population size and the rates of change. Okay, so what are we doing then? So we're going to represent mathematically, and we're going to make assumptions. Uh, we do that when we do the, the uh, mechanics stuff. Uh, we're going to try and use some maths techniques. We're going to see what's going on. And then we're going to think, okay, does it match what's actually going on? And then we're going to kind of improve it. Now, that kind of cycle just continues and continues until it looks really, really amazing. We've got different types of models. So we're going to go with a straight line first, the linear model. So the directly proportional and the linked by... A constant and you've got y equals mx is just a, a straight forward thing. So if you remember at GCSE, if it was direct proportion, it was all on a straight line and it went through the group the, through the origin. So remember you were told that at GCSE. Right, so hang on, I've lost my page in the completed pack already because I've got carried away talking and didn't look what was there. So it's a straight line. Passing through the origin. And that's what you were told at GCSE for the gradient of m. So we've got a conversion graph linking kilograms to pounds. So you've done this like a, a thousand times. You've seen it in my son's like year eight stuff where they've been drawing graphs and it's like kilos against pounds, uh, stuff like that. So we know that one kilo is roughly 2.2 pounds. And uh, if you did it, remember at GCSE, you put your little lines on, and whoopsie, whoop, roughly 2.2. There. Okay. So my equation would be y equals 2.2x. There. So the graph is a straight line through the origin, so approximately how many kilos are there in 3 pounds? So I'm coming across at 3 pounds. I'm going down, so that's what I would have done at GCSE. But really, what I want to do is I want to find x when y is 3. So 3 is 2.2x. So 3 over 2.2. Uh, is x, which is approximately 1.36. Now that's going to be in kilos, isn't it? Kilos is x. So that's straightforward, isn't it? That's nice enough. Next. So right, okay. Interpreting the gradients. So this kind of blows people's minds sometimes. And I've had to teach this in the past on other maths courses. So, whew, so you're often asked two things about the gradients. What are the units? So you look at the y and you look at the x. And it's the y per x, whatever it is. Uh, then you have to interpret it in context. 
Now, the way you do it is say, all right, if I went across one on the x, how much would I go up or go down on the y? And that's what this structure is here. Now, you have to follow the structure, both of these structures, to make sure it's right. So these are quite important. Is, oh, you stop moving around. Uh, put up there. There we go. Okay, so we've got the price of the silver rope chains in different lengths. I'll show them. Something's just fell on the floor. I heard something drop on the floor, but I can't actually see anything. Maybe the roof is going to fall. You never know. Right, so what two features of the graph indicate that it's directly proportional? So we know it's directly proportional because the first one is it's a straight line. And the second one is, is it goes through the origin. If I haven't got any silver rope chain, I don't have any money, do you? So it's going to cost me out for nothing. Um, so what have we got then? So it says write down the price of a chain measuring 10 inches. So what I want is the gradient if I can. Hmm. I don't know if I can. Can I get that? So if I go up here, I don't know if you can read off, but it's 45 or 4 point. Yeah, that's 10 inches. Yeah. So for 10 inches, it's 45 pounds. So I've got that. And hence, calculate the gradient for that. Oh, I see. Right, so they want us to use the fact that I've got 0, 0 as a point, and I've got 10, 45. You see where this is going now. So my gradient will be 45 minus nothing over 10 minus nothing. So my gradient is 45 over 10 divided through by 5, 9 over 2. 9 over 2. Yeah, 4.5 if you want. There. So write down an equation for the gradient of the line, where P is its price in pounds, so P is 4.5 watts of L, its length. So I've got L for its length, and I've got P for its price. Interpret the value of K in the context. So K is its gradient, okay? So you've got to think what this means. For every inch of the length of the chain, the price goes up by £4.50. That's what I'm saying, aren't I? So for for every, let's have a look, make sure I get it right. For every one inch, so that's my unit of x, the y value, so the price, Increases by four pound fifty. There, so increases by m units of y, four pound fifty. Can you read the four pound fifty on my dodgy? Oh, that's nice. Sometimes I get that potentially just using my phone. You can't really see what I'm writing. I'm just going off what I'm saying. There. Right now it says write down the units. So if you remember the units are the units of y, which is pounds, per the units of x. So the units are pounds per inch. There. Oh, a question for you. Who doesn't love a question for you? Right, have a go at this one then. So it's an easy extension of a spring. And M is the mass on it. So if you haven't got any mass on it, you've got no extension. Let's go back. Come on, three. <gasps> oh, excuse me. There you go. So you make sure you've got that right. It doesn't ask for it, but the units would be centimetres 